Well, welcome back to another Wednesday Whisk review from you boys, the Buffalo Happy Hour. Today we are reviewing Wise Man. The Wise Man once said, right? Uh, no, it's it's the Wise Man Bourbon. So this is a product from Kentucky Owl, and they linked up with Bardstown Bourbon Company to blend three different whiskeys into one product for you to enjoy. Uh, it's 90.8 proof and 45.4 abv math it's a kentucky straight bourbon it did win double gold in the 2022 world spirits competition which is a fairly big deal uh there was a lot of things that have happened recently with this brand and that's kind of what we're outlining before we get into our review per se uh so quick backstory kentucky owl released the brand in september 2021 It's a blend, this specifically, is a blend of a four-year wheat and high rye bourbon and then a a five-and-a-half-year and and an eight-and-a-half, sorry, eight-and-a-half-year Kentucky-sourced bourbon as well. First time talking, bud? Yeah. It's not like I co-host a decent podcast. Anyways, the... Let's use the term decent loosely. Loose. Uh, The specifics on the five-and-a-half and and the eight-and-a-half-year are undisclosed. So we don't really know mash bills. We don't know anything like that. So chill out uh but we do know that it's through like i said earlier bardstown's bourbon company and the changes that kentucky owl are going through is with certain personnel leaving so the previous four roses coo is now stepping up to really drive the brand into a different stratosphere hoping right i mean that's everyone's intent but stoli group purchased the company in 2017 and all of the changes are happening extremely quickly, as well as them building a $150 million bourbon park. Estimated price anyways, because we all know they have grand ideas, right. and then something is going to come up that's beyond budget, so whatever. Um, however, they also are releasing, as of March 2022, a rye. It's still going to be in partnership with Kentucky Owl and Bartown? From what I understand, cool. yeah. Um, I think it's a contract type thing that they have, so I'm excited to kind of see what else they release, but most people are saying that this is just kind of like an average Kentucky bourbon per usual. I'm excited though, just because of the blend aspect mm-hmm. of it. It might be something a little uh, more unique. New York, unique well, New York. Well, hopefully it's a little bit more than average because it's $47 and it's right at that $50 mark where you're kind of expecting it to be a little elevated, you know? Yeah, which leads us into our discussion of sponsors because this is Addy's price up in New York. Mm-hmm. It might be a different price. From what I've seen online, it's generally around 45 to 50 bucks per bottle. But Addy's, thank you again for uh, being the partner and sponsor of this video. We do appreciate that. They do have an in-house wine sommelier as well. If you are within the state of New York, they can ship this bottle right to your door um, with their extremely knowledgeable staff. And then if you are interested in picking the picking this up in your local to Buffalo, swing on over and first check inventory on their app that you can download on the Apple App Store or the Google Playground Store, but then also uh, order it, pick it up, and then you can get it at 10% off on our shelf. So For the next week, yeah. For the next week. So that's exciting. But let's dive into label branding because I feel like this is going to be something special regarding label branding anyways. Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, I really love that dark navy blue it's basically just like our navy blue which is why i I like it so much i think but the dark navy blue with the gold accents and the red lettering and then all of that intricate detail of the label kentucky owl wise like it's a like a cartoonish graphic behind it it's busy i like it. it's very busy it's busy in a good way. Yeah. It's appealing to the eye it makes you kind of wonder a little bit and kind of question some things it's not overdone by any means what is I'm okay with sapientia it. vera siente e mean? It sounds like part of an exorcism. <laughs> Asian American oak. The bottle is a cool shape. It's got uh, embossing on or engraving on the sides. There's a lot of details on the bottle. It's not a typical shape. What's the cork situation here like? Let's dive into her. Easy. Should we take her out to dinner first? <laughs> Um, ooh, good size cork. Like ooh, that. There's there's ooh. a there's a little branding on top. Real okay. cork. Kentucky Owl burned into the cork too. Oh, look okay, at that. Okay, okay. That's not bad. It's it's the, it's the little details, you know, that kind of put us over the edge. We like some of this stuff. They got some on their foil. 
that you rip off to get to the cork. They got the brand seal basically etched on top. That's a nice little touch. I'm okay with this whole experience so far. And the back is all, like, busy, too. This yeah. is a really cool bottle. Yeah, nice job. It's like they know what they're doing down there in Kentucky or something. A plus plus check. A plus plus check. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, let's uh, let's pour this bad boy out. Taste and pour. We got three to do today. So if you're excited about what we have coming up, make sure you stick around, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment down below of what other whiskey you would like us to review because we're doing three today, and uh, it's gonna get wild. It's gonna get a end. little weird, which is fine. I love how you say tasting pour, and it's basically a normal pour at a good whiskey bar. Yeah, or to normal people. And you and I are like, oh, this, this is tasting poor for sure. <laughs> All right, nose. There's a lot of spice and fruit on this. Mm -hmm. A like lot of caramel and vanilla, too. Fruit skins, and then you do get that aged on the nose, like the... Uh, it smells hot, the, though, to me. It's, a, it's not that hot, either. It smells very ethanol-y. Yeah, but it has that aged characteristic through the nose of, like, that abandoned barn. But the ethanol is potent if you... That's why you... N rotate nostrils. Sorry, I'm struggling because I just literally engulfed all the flames through the nose. There's a lot of fruit in this, though, in the nose. Yeah, I'm, g I'm getting kind of that green grape Same. smell. Same. Same. It reminds me of, like, a, a white wine nose. Kind of reminds me of, like, a oaked cognac. Specifically regarding the fruit, it reminds me of a white wine. Yeah. Um, the rest of it is, is pretty on par with other bourbons from Kentucky, but... Kind of smells like an oaked cognac to me. Yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. Nose is actually pleasant, though. I'm going to go A. Yeah, let's go A. Okay, A it is. I agree, I agree, I agree. Taste? Agree, Initial agree, taste? Agree. Initial taste. Yeah, it makes sense. Doesn't blow you away. It's semi-one-dimensional. Uh, one it is good, though. There's kind of like that uh, toffee-esque element to it, where it's like more of a nut. Almost like the, the ending note characteristics of an almond you know yeah this is very oaky and hot it is a, yeah the the oak kind of punches you and it it comes out like a fireball like you get the initial little bit and then it like balloons like an a bomb exploding in your mouth and it's just all oak mm. it's this weird path that it gets to your initial taste, and then it just subsides. It's like, boom. boom. You know what I'm saying? All right. Boom. So initial taste, uh, B. 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 It's. I mean, it's good. It hits you in a different way that other whiskey doesn't. It, that that whole animation, you know, that's different than what I've experienced. I mean, it's. It hits you in a different way than other whiskey does, which I like. But the tasting notes are similar to other whiskeys. So I guess you kind of have to weigh the two. Um, I mean, taking this with a grain of salt, you're, you're not looking for it to be anything crazy. It's, it's a blended product between two Kentucky whiskeys. Three. Three, three, three well, whiskeys. Well, three whiskeys, two distilleries, yes. Right, right, yeah. So you're not really expecting anything crazy out of the ordinary. Um, so in that in mind, I would probably go B with this. That that oak, the there's a little bit of like a rye spice or a peppercorn spice to th yep. that too. And then it gets a little honey vanilla-y in the initial taste. And then we'll talk about the ending note in a second. But B, uh, I think that that's probably a good call on this initial taste. Yeah. The B, you get hit with a lot of the viscosity of the oils in this. The ending note? Yeah, for the ending note. What did I say? The B. I said the B. You sure did. I'm fried. I meant the ending note. You get hit with the viscosity of the Dude, that arm the just product. drunk. I don't think you are. The B, you get hit with a lot of the viscosity. The B, you get hit with a This happened last time during a weekly episode, and you were 100% <laughs> correct, so I'm just going to roll with you. I have faith. But yeah, it's the ending note is v kind of one-dimensional and vague. Yeah, it's like wood sugar, oak. And, like, that's it. And oil. Yeah. Which, speaking there, of oil, there's a I little really bit want of bread and oil. What? The, 
Yeah. The sugars kind of come out like a, it's kind of like a candied sugar. Yeah. Like a little caramel sugary, like a, I wouldn't say like a Werther's caramel candy, but like crystallized brown sugar, I guess, at the back end. That's probably a better way to call it. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. And you know what I mean? B, B minus? B minus. Look at that, dude. Yeah. Crushed it. Same page. All right, dude, give me that countdown for that final rating. We'll see what we come up with here. I'm kind of fascinated on your rating. Three, two, one. 84. 83.5. Honestly, this is... uh, I understand why there's a lot of talk about this being average. However, there's many changes going on within the brand. And being recently purchased by Stoli Company in 2017 is still going to have some changes, even Mm -hmm. though I understand it's 2022. It is what it is, right? I mean, they, they just took on a pretty big endeavor. My recommendation, throw this in a decanter, everyday sipper. You're not going to really care too much. Um, it's a nice bottle to have in the collection, for sure. It looks stunning on the shelf. It does. I'm super excited to see what their rye is. Me how too. That tastes. I really want to try the rye. So, Tyler, if you can get your hands on it, let us know. Or you guys here, if you want to yeah. let us know, and uh, we'll we'll grab some and review it. Because I, you're getting that spicy, sweet characteristic in the bourbon, so I'm wondering if their rye is going to be even spicier and less, like if they're going to go that direction with it. I'm, I'm excited for it. So Absolutely. Tune in, I guess. Make sure you subscribe because if we do get this in, we will be reviewing it. So, but there you go. 83.5. It's solid. Yeah. Nice job. All right, everybody. We will see you next week for another fun-filled weekly episode of a Wednesday Whiskey Review. Yep. Please remember to always drink responsibly, be a good person. And Michael, do not litter. We're out. We'll be right back.